not said openly before the Christmas come. Because y'all got to be real with these spirits that get on us. Go over there and do what you said you're going to do. Nah, I can't do that because she wrong. <laughs> that happened twice, y'all. I called my record. Told him about what I did. Tried to ask him for a little input. Heard what he was going to say. But I already knew I was wrong. So then I made another vow. <laughs> what did I tell him to Maureen? I say, by the time the sun go down, <laughs> by the time the sun go down, I'm going to go and I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. Because I said I was going to do that. Mr. Brigham, let me get back on track. Y'all have to learn to do that. We have to submit and keep our covenants. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, the reason why our wives don't want to submit to us, I'm going here because marriage is something that Satan is attacking right now, right? Mm -hmm. That adversary is trying to bring tribulations to the home. Come. You want your woman to have faith in you men? You want them to submit to you men? Be men in your word. Mm -hmm. And sisters, I ain't telling you to rebel against him when he ain't being a man of his word. Because we know what Abigail did. She prayed for her man, and she still did. She was going to do We got uh, commandments. We got to keep as men, and women, y'all got y'all to keep. Let's stop trying to judge each other and just do your part. Mm -hmm. It says they can be won by the chance conversation of their wives. Mm -hmm. But we got to be men of our word. Because we can't be men of our word, the Father can't use us. We're doing our own thing. And I'm just so thankful that he heard me. Real quick, let's go to Yaka 9, 10. Because this whole thing is about shepherds. He was talking about leadership. Leadership, in order for us to be considered leadership, we have to learn how to lead. We have to start doing things the right way. And just so you all know, Mr. Bakar, the brother talked about judges, and that's right. That's what we do do on a certain level. But it says you can go to the individual first, then you can go with two or three witnesses, and then if that don't work, you take it for the whole what? Congregation. The whole congregation. Go ahead, go ahead. That's Rick Carter Shaw, right? That's New Covenant. That's giving you the spirit of this command right here. Judges are set up, and it says who should actually be the judge when you have a trial that has to be called. No, we know y'all's already in it. We, we, we know y'all's in it. But it does say, does it say the more raised are the leaders just have to be the judges? When issues come up, you're supposed to get who? And not a knock to anyone. You're supposed to get the lowest of the assembly. Mm -hmm. Let them be involved. Let them be in the matter. Let them be in the issue. If they're trained at least in Torah, if they can at least hear between right and wrong, you have to teach what judgment is, and then we must then what? Apply the judgment properly. So, yes, Maurice can oversee some things, but there's times we need to call on what? The Mishpachah. Mm -hmm. But how can we call on the Mishpachah if we can't get in order and if y'all can't get in order? Okay. I can ask the question, why are you here? Why are you here? That's the thing we used to use as high holiday Israelites, right? And I still use that term. Yep. You don't see them none on Shabbat, but every high holiday, they there. They there. <laughs> and complaining when they there. You should have had this. You should have had that. You should have had this and you should have had that. Come well, you should be fellowship with us all year long. So you'll be the same brew up so we can be a God and you can understand why we don't have that because we find out it's GMO. <laughs> we find out they got pork casing. We didn't talk about this early in the year. You just popping up. But anyway, back to yeah, Luke 9, 10, start from the top. Luke 9, 10 and 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter through the door to the sheepfold, but climbs up another way, that one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Yahweh Shah used this figure of speech. They did not know what he had been saying to them. Yahweh shall therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me, he shall be saved, and shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to slaughter and to destroy. I have come that they might possess life and that they might possess it beyond measure. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But the hireling and not a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. Mm. Hold up for a second. Mm. Mishpaka, stop hearing every voice. Mm. <laughs> we want to hear from everybody except from the most high. Mm -hmm. If we're supposed to say we're trying to be together, we're trying to be one, how can we be one? We keep bringing more problems to the situation. Shepherds, we have to stop introducing or bringing beavers among us and among the sheep. We have to be better equipped and better prepared as shepherds to be able to see a beaver, to be able to see the walking dead. Huh? What did the walking dead do? What did the dead do? The walkers do. <laughs> and what do they want to eat? Brain. They go for the brain. Because they have no life in them, so they want to take your one. Kind. They want to take the life of your understanding from you. So there's some that's walking dead among us, as the dome said, with the nicest guards on. ZZ down. Name of the most I own it. Like I got. <laughs> And the day because we together on Shabbat or like you got Aki, I see you looking up there. Because we wondered if we were on Shabbat trying to build. But the point being, there will be those that would come in just to suck the life out of you. And we as the shepherds have to stop introducing them to the sheep. We, the shepherds, have been bamboozled. All right. Brothers come talking a good Hebrew game. Listen, y'all, I'm more fluent out than I am in. And I will admit that. Because when I'm thinking my Hebrew thought, oh, I can say something to you in Hebrew. <laughs> but when you say it back to me, because my native tongue right now is <laughs> it's English. Yeah. And I'm trying to learn my way back. Come on, man. Huh? <laughs> I'm the Carolina. I'm the Carolina. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. Stop letting the hirelings Y'all hear about a hiring? Mm -hmm. More if you're going to be shepherds, you have to lay down your life for the sheep. You have to have a heart or a leg of the shepherd. The shepherd, Hamashiach. Did he lay down his life, y'all? He laid it down. We have to be willing to lay down our life. That's things we have to put up with and deal with. We have to care about each and every individual in this room. But a hiring. <laughs> About that money. I'll come in and tear your house down and go to the next house and tear it down. We haven't been inviting hirelings into our houses. And I'm not the most fluent in Hebrew in this room. And I'm not the least fluent in Hebrew in this room. I can pray in Hebrew. I can hold some sentences in Hebrew. I can read in Hebrew. But you say something to me in Hebrew. Give me a moment. Let me translate that. <laughs> I'm just being honest. And that's what we all have to learn to do with ourselves. Do not let someone come because they feel like they know more language than you. Mm -hmm. It's a new doctrine out. See, it's doctrine that's killing us. Mm -hmm. If your moray don't speak Hebrew, he shouldn't be teaching. That's crazy. He don't have the truth. We have become more knowledgeable than we have to let the spirit fight for us. Uh -huh. We have to learn to fight the spirit as it used to be said to us. Let the Ruach fight for you. Because your Moray don't speak Hebrew, he ain't teaching the truth. He don't know what the words say. Moray Lamar, you gave a teacher, right? And when he was teaching, he came out of the book of Matthew or Matthews. And there's some things that's in there. And that's something about a strong man in the house. When you let them hirelings into the house, they're casing out. They're unlocking doors, and they're bringing in their help. And then they're going to bind a strong man. Overthrow his house. 
But I'm going to throw something else at y'all. I said Passover two years ago. Some people don't believe in the brick out of Shah no more. Some don't believe in Mashiach no more. I don't know where you stand. I believe in brick out of Shah. I believe in Mashiach. And I do not right. think Shaul was a false prophet. Mm -hmm. By the way of the Ruach, I understood what Shaul was trying to say. And he was trying to say it to his brethren. So wow. when it sounded like he was speaking contrary to the law, he was telling us to stop going out there. Yahweh, I show you how it's shot. Judge the world and look at yourself. So now, let me get back to that. <laughs> you have time. Cast out Hasatan. No. Huh? No. Who got stones in here? Did y'all search these people at the door? Did I search y'all? I call on the sacred name of our father, right? I call on the son by his sacred name, right? But when I first started this walk, I was with God, Lord, and Jesus. And I'm not trying to reestablish that. However, if Satan does not cast out Satan, how do you hear? So stop calling everybody Satan and let your understanding grow and figure out how to go back to pull them out of that. You can't pull nobody out with that judgment right there. You have to teach them and bring them out of that. So where am I going with this? As a shepherd, I started understanding that what? I got to understand this word better for myself before I can take it to anyone else. And I have to let the Ruach fight for me. So now for those who said that your Moray does not teach Hebrew, he don't know what he talked about, he's not teaching. If the word says that you can't come to him or Satan don't cast out Satan, then how are we here calling on the name of the Most High Yah? How do we come to the, the term hallelujah, bring halal me and praise or boast in the name of the Most High Yah when we didn't know his name years ago when we started this thing? Mm -hmm. Who was leading us then? Mm -hmm. With stammering lips and another tongue, a lashon, which is language. Will I do what? Teach my people. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. My Mr. Cop, from the beginning to the ending, it's, it's got a continuity there. Pray for the Ruach HaKodesh. Let us fight in the Ruach. Let us fight in spirit. And the divisions that's in the houses, before we can come together as one, there's things in this room that need to be worked out. Morai Shael said that if you've done some things that de deserve the beating, you need to get your beat. What I'm about to say is this. The commandment is thou shalt not steal. The commandment is thou shalt not uh, kill, right? Shael was just talking about judgment. If you have stolen someone's good name, if you killed someone's good name because they had to give you right ruling, because they rebuked you, because it wasn't going the way you thought it should go in the assembly, and you're all up and down as a tailbearer, complaining about what Maury saw and so did, call Smart with you. See what kind of answers you get from Smart. <laughs> It'll stop. And that's how we all have to be, Mr. God. We have to start saying, look, is it me? Is it me? Now, I know I done went well over 10 minutes, but it's hard. I got so much more I would love to say, Mr. God. But what I will say is repent. Right. Examine thyself. Why are you here? We have to stop being high holy day Israelites. Or when everybody's going to be in town, Israelites. <laughs> If you want to be one with Yah, be one with him all the time. If you want to be one with me, be one with me all the time. Not when Lamar come through. Not when Baruch come through. Not when Shael come through. Not when Abraham come through. Not when Zachary come through. Be one with me all the time. There's some issues in the room that we need to pray about. There's some issues in our life that we need to pray about. And if we've stolen someone's good name when we was upset and now we're realizing it, if we stole their credibility, if we've killed their character, Let's stop apologizing privately. The same way we put them on blast on Facebook. Why do we always apologize to somebody on the phone? <laughs> but I called you the devil in front of a room of over 50 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I want to privately apologize to you. Reestablish my name. It says when you want to uh, come before the, uh, the altar as the copy render it is, you're supposed to leave your what? Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to leave your gift or your offering or your sacrifice there and go back and do what? Yeah. Make it right with your brother. So with that, I pray and hope everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I try to be as close to the I try to come home and get you down. I pray you eight well.
It's about striving for perfection. You know what I'm saying? We, we, everybody has to go through their transition period. Um, but these are the, these are those who are put in place. Uh, we do have a. Do we have any other leaders? I know we have one. I know we have. Uh, I'll get to y'all in just a second. I know we got. Uh, 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 we do have another leader. I ain't gonna say too much, but uh, uh, Adon, uh, uh, Ted does also teach. His style. excellent moray also. So uh, he didn't speak today, but he also teaches also. So total Rabah for him and his camp coming through. Thank you. Uh, hey, hey, and more uh, 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 Also, I, I keep wanting to say anything. Oh, no, no, things okay. like. So total for you and your Anybody I missed, Shlika, uh, I'm gonna get to my brothers in just a second. At this time, we just wanna uh, we just wanna test the law for the people. You know, so we just wanna uh, uh, everybody stand. We just wanna test the law, pray for the people. That these words, uh, these words don't just fall to the ground. You know, we're living, we're growing, we're understanding more and more about these things as we uh, uh, get closer and closer to the mark. So. Uh, I just want to just uh, pray that y'all seal these things, seal these things in your land. Look at how Yahweh Chalachenu Melech Ha'olam. Amen. Abiyah, first and foremost, we say, here we are, Unanet. Let your will be done within us. We present ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. May you use each and every soul represented here. May you not remember our iniquities, which we have done before your face. But look upon us in your mercy and your compassion and teach us, but make us teachable. Give us the ear that we need to hear you and the eye we need to see. We say to the Rabbah for the Tob and the Ra, for our experiences through Torah is what make you tangible, is what gives us the words in our mouth and the light that shines so that others may come to know you and say, who is it that you serve? May the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov be ours and you establish your covenant with us. Let not any of your words of increase to our forefathers fall to the ground, but let them be fulfilled in our lifetime, Abba Yah. Give us perseverance, kokma, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and most of all, endurance. Season the words in each of our mouths with salt, Abba Yah, and teach us your timing that we may do what you intended with the Torah, and that's give life and preserve it. From the gray hair to the young and to the unborn, would you establish your covenant with us this day? For even as you did with Ezra, and all the people stood up and said, I mean, I mean, all the words that you have spoken and delivered to us, Abba Yah, we will do them. We thank you for your leaders for your abs, your strong houses, for your nashim, your yaladim, for all of these souls here are yours and not ours to covet. So give us wisdom on how to build one another in your righteousness. For whatever times ahead, Abba Yah, we thank you that your word is already a light to our path and a light to our feet. And that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue rising against will be condemned. We thank you that every, every soul here has agreed on your Torah and your Son, Yahushua Mashiach. Being the example that we can continue this example for those to come. 
Now in your name and your character above all things, would you increase us that we can fulfill your will throughout the earth. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Um, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Um, um, today, I'm actually going to give a lesson on the spirit of Excel. And when we look up the word Excel, it's the Hebrew word for being sluggish. That's the English rendering or lazy. So the spirit of Axel, sluggish, lazy, but if anyone provide not for his own, and specifically those of his own house. That is the lecture. That, that is my subject today. Axel, meaning to be sluggish or lazy, is the Hebrew word. The English translation is to be sluggish or lazy. It is an adjective to be sluggish. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and specifically those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel is a non-believer. So the scriptures are saying that if a man does not provide for himself, his wife, and his children, he is worse than a non-believer. So in other words, Mr. W, if a man is not providing for his own house, there is no point of him even reading the scriptures. Because the scriptures right here in 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 is saying he's worse than a non-believer. So there's no point in believing at all if you're not going to provide for your own home, for yourself. The reason that the Spirit is moving me to bring this message out is because there's a lot of Israelites out there um, in Yasha Allah that's teaching that a man doesn't have to work. He could marry one wife, two wives, three wives, and get his wife to take care of him. Now where is that in the scriptures? How do they come up with that analogy? That is not scripture. That is not scripture. And this is why this subject is in dire need to be discussed amongst Israelites. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 says it like this, verse 12. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord, Yahweh Shah, that with quietness, they work. They work. They work. So we see in the scriptures again, a man is supposed to work, excuse me, move off the key. A man is supposed to work and provide for himself and to provide for his home. There is no way around this. This is scripture. And they eat their own bread. So what we get from this understanding, Mr. W, I don't know about you, but what I understand for this is that a man is supposed to work, provide for himself, and eat his own bread, and provide for his family. That is the understanding that is written here. They work and eat their own bread. Verse 13 says, but he, brethren, so they're going to brother Paul. He's talking to his fellow Israelites. He said, brother, be not weary in well doing. Don't worry about how well you're doing. Verse 14. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, no, that man have no company with him. So the apostle Paul is saying, hey, if a man doesn't want to work, if he, don't want, if he does not want to abide by this epistle, then we're not supposed to do it. This is what the scriptures say. 
We're not supposed to deal with them. Are we supposed to have mercy on someone that don't want to work, don't want to provide for their family? No. Not according to the brother Paul. And if any man obey not our word of this epistle, no, that man have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. So you're supposed to make this man ashamed. He doesn't want to work. If you don't work, then you're not supposed to eat. Verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, so we're not supposed to make him like an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So we're supposed to cut him with the scriptures and say, look, brother, you're supposed to work. You have a responsibility to look out for yourself and look out for your family. The community is not supposed to take, be taking care of a grown, overgrown man who's capable of taking care of himself because that's putting too much on his fellow brothers. And a lot of this is going on in the nation of Israel. And a lot of you are not going to like this message, but I'm not here to say what you like. I'm here to tell the truth. The book of um, John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Not set you free, but make you free. So it's only going to be the truth that's going to set you free. Verse 15, 16, 1 Timothy, I'm, I'm so I can. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. So the Apostle Paul is worthy to be listened to because he's coming through the spirit of Hamashiach. And we go to the 10th verse in that same chapter, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 3, verse 10, is still talking about the no good Israelite man that don't want to work, that don't want to provide for his family, that want to marry three or four or five different women and make a living off of the women. Because that no good dirty dog don't want to work. And if this is cutting you, oh well, let it be a cold cut. It might sound cold, but this is love. This is giving you love. This is, this is why the book of Titus 1 and 13 said to rebuke them sharply so that they will remain sound in faith. So when we see the outcome going off, it is our duties to rebuke them with scriptures so that they will walk right. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any not work, neither shall we eat. So we don't have a responsibility of looking out for those Akim that do not want to work. That think that it's the responsibility of the community to look out for them. Now, the scriptures say that if we own property, if we have crops, we're not supposed to glean the fields. We're supposed to leave some for the poor and the homeless. But it's a man's responsibility to provide for himself and for his family if he's capable. I have a question. For number 11, after that scripture you just said, for we even when we were with you, yeah, that means they're not working. They're too busy going over here talking about Brother Naji. They're too busy going over here um, spreading rumors. When he say busybody, he's talking about a tailpipe, a person that's going around and spreading rumors and got their mouth in something that they shouldn't have it in when they should be working and providing for their family. And it's also talking about women that's busybodies. So that's what that's talking about. So we as a man have a duty to look after our wives and after our children. This is law. This is Bible. The Most High has demanded us as men to maintain our wives. You can't give me any kind of religion, and we Israelites don't deal with religion, but Brother Najee, you know, if you look at the religion of Islam, 
A man has to work. It says, get, get out of here. Go over there, please. Man is to be the maintainers of women. A woman, the Quran says, is supposed to be the consoler of her husband. She's supposed to console the man. The man goes out, he has a difficult day. It's, you know, because when you're going out into this world and you deal with all these spirits out here, by the time the man comes back in his home, his head is messed up. And the woman is supposed to be there to console her man. But she's not there to do that. As soon as he comes through the door, instead of her saying, oh, hi, baby, how have you been doing? How was your day? And so on and so forth. Um, she may have an argument for her. She got something else on his mind, uh, on her mind. She's, her, she's a, she has to be a small psychologist or psychiatrist to be able to deal with what's on that man's mind, to get him in a peaceful state and calm him down, and then he could actually maybe do what, what she has. So she's supposed to be able to console him. It says that she gives him peace and contentment of mind. But if she is not in the right state of mind, she can't give to him, but she's never been taught herself. So the so-called black man is catching the hell every way that he turns. So even if he is working, when he comes home, he has to deal with her. So she has to know how to deal with that man's head. She has to know how to deal with what's on his screen. So sisters, you have to be a small psychologist, psychiatrist, and be able to consult the man. The man come in, you have to take his jacket off. Oh, baby, is your back hurting? Would you like a massage? Would you like me to rub your feet? But the so-called black woman, her mind is so messed up. Now, I know a lot of you, when I started off about a man has to work, a lot of sisters probably would say, amen, amen. But now, I got to talk to you as well. Because you have a responsibility. The Most High has given us specific responsibilities and duties. It is a man's duty to maintain the home, Brother Ali. That's right. Is that correct? That's right. Shalom, if the scriptures say, it, it, this is written in Bible, this is written in Quran. It is a man's responsibility to retain his wife and his children. We can't rid ourselves of that responsibility. So we as men cannot shy away from that. We as men cannot twist scriptures and say, oh, I'll go and marry three sisters and they would work for me. Where is that written at? Where is that at? What scripture are you reciting? Uh, well, I, I marry, uh, you know, and the brother may be well versed in the Bible. And, and this is what Paul was talking about when he was talking about people that knew the letter, but they didn't have the right spirit. They just knew the letter. They knew the word. Many brothers can recite scripture, but then when you talk to his wife, well, that nigga won't work. He won't work in a pie shop. He won't even walk to the corner to fill out an application. I'm telling you, it's priests in Israel that's doing this. There's Israelites on YouTube right now that's doing this. Shame on you. Shame on you. So the book of Ephesians 4 verse 28 says like this. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Meaning the work. Meaning the work. Let him that still still no more. But rather let him labor. Working with his hands. The things which is good. That he may give to him that need. So a man is supposed to work with his hands. To provide for himself. And to help to give to the need. But many of our men are under a false perception that they don't have to do this. That it's okay not to work. That it's okay to be a vagabond in Israel, running from woman to woman to woman to woman, messing up her life. Now watch this, watch this. Sometimes, you know, a sister, you know, 
hey, brother Ali, I want you to cut me if I'm wrong, too. Now, yes, you sir. know, no, ahead, when, when you first meet a sister, brother, yes, I'm not sir. talking about a sister that has been exposed to this no good work. I'm talking about a sister, she's been reared right, she's been in the truth, she wants a good man, but she hasn't been properly taught how and what to look for in a good man. So, she finds a man, he's attracted, He's, he may have material things, because you know a lot of us will get flashy cars and whatever. All that, everything that a man does, he does it to impress a woman. Tell me that I'm wrong. That's why a man goes out, get a flashy car, try and dress real nice. He's not doing that to impress the brothers. He's doing that to impress a woman. So the woman may fall for that, but it's carnal. And then she find out, you know, six months down the road, this nigga don't want to work. That's right. He just want to stay home That's right. and play video games That's right. with his children or his stepchildren. That's right. And she's out going to work. And, you know, days get worse. Well, they don't you can get a job. I look for a job. They don't want to hire me because I'm black. You got all kinds of excuses. Now, mm -hmm. if, if, no, I'm right. serious. If, 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 That's right. if yeah, black man, a, a so-called black man can't get a job before he, because he's black, that he has a job already That's right. of making his own damn job. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, work for yourself. There's no excuse for that. So, I mean, there's no way around it. The scripture says, Ephesians 4 and 28, let him that still, still no more, but rather let him work with his hands and the things that which is good that he may give to those that are in need. So what he does, he, he may mess that sister's life up. It may be a good sister, but she give her heart to the man, and then the next man that she gets with, that brother has it rough. He has it rough because now she's going to judge every man by the criteria that this man has actually displayed to her. And this is why a lot of our sisters are messed up. This is why a lot of our sisters are messed up, and this has to stop. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11 says, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly working not and are busybodies. That's the um, verse that my Esau just um, quoted. That are busybodies. They're not working, but they're spreading rumors. They're talebearers. They're going talking bad. And in particularly, this is mostly done by sisters. But there's a lot of brothers that do this as well because they have that feminine spirit because they've been raised by women. So they go from house to house like a woman, very emotional, talking bad about the other brothers. Oh, uh, uh, I-U-I-C this. Oh, I-S-U-I-P-K this. Um, and so on and so forth. Just spreading rumors. What's your question? Oh, the um, scripture you said in Ephesians 28 when it says working with his hands, in the scripture that I read today where it talks about a wise woman building up her house but a foolish woman tear it down with her hands. So it lets me know that the Most High see that your hands are very important for building up and tearing down. Yeah, right, right. Right. So, from, you know, um, <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 3 and 11, you know, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, Chapter 1, verse 26. And Yahweh said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So if I man am made in the image and likeness of the Most High, then I'm supposed to be able to do anything because I'm made in the image of God. So in my proper state, I am a God. Psalms 82, verse 6 says, did I not say that you are gods? So, in your proper state, you are like God. This is what the scriptures is talking about, saying, let this mind be in you, the same that was in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. Whose mind did he have? He had the mind of the Most High. When you got the mind of the Most High, you start to think like the Most High. You start to act like the Most High. So when people see you, they see a direct representation of the Most High. They see Christ in you. This is how it's supposed to be, man. 
this is how it's supposed to be. Whenever you're dealing with someone and they can't look at you in your eyes, because we're supposed to be kings. We're supposed to be kings and priests. If you're dealing with a man or someone or a woman and they can't look at you in your eyes, they recognize something in you and they don't want you to see the folly in them. They don't want you to see the wrong in them. So they won't look at you in the eyes because the eyes are the doorway to the soul. The eyes are the doorway to the soul. So man, I man being made in the image and likeness of Yahweh is supposed to be a king. But our men are not kings today. They're boys. Our men are like boys. They're boys in adults' bodies. Because many of them don't want to work. They want to act like pimps and use our women to take care of them. This is many of our men today. So we as good men have to re reawaken that nature as a good man. So many of you have actually only grown up in size and in body but you have not spiritually grown in knowledge. You have a responsibility to grow spiritually as well. You know, um, some of you, 25, 35, some even 45. I know some 45 year olds in New York living in the damn projects with their mother, waiting for her to die so they could take over the projects and put it in their name. I'm, to, these are, I'm not fabricating no story. This is the truth. 45 year old men living with their mom because they don't want to work. Just concerned about how many different pair of sneakers you could get for the summer and the freshest pair of Timberlands that you could get in the winter. She need to keep your little bit good behind that. See, that's not a man, that's a boy. He never grew up properly to be a man. And the problem is, is that he doesn't know how to be a man because he wasn't properly reared by a man. Most people like that was actually just reared by a woman. And she may have actually done her best, but she cannot teach him how to be a man. So, many of you, you watch videos on YouTube. Many of you, um, you came into this truth by watching videos on YouTube, um, some of you have actually never really attended a congregation. Some of you never really had an elder. So you learn from YouTube. So you get a lot of um, different YouTube views. And if you actually go wrong on something, you don't really have anyone to correct you because you are a YouTube Israelite. You never had an elder. You've never been, been, you've never been taught if, well, it says this, brother, but you got to deal with wisdom. It says this, sister, but you got to deal with wisdom. But 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6 says, Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. What was the Apostle Paul talking about there? He was talking about a lot of brothers out there that has actually set themselves up as priests. They know the scriptures, but they're not in the right spirit. We see Israelite brothers out there that will curse you out on the street for no reason. Just curse you out. And they think that is the spirit of Hamashiach. But that's not the spirit of truth. That's not the spirit of truth. Hamashiach said the spirit bears witness who is the children of the Most High. The Spirit. It's the Spirit. So, I mean, you can know scriptures, you can recite scriptures all day, but you got to have that wisdom. you got to have knowledge, and you got to have understanding. you got to have all three. 120 degrees of wisdom, 120 degrees of knowledge, and 120 degrees of understanding gives you a complete cipher. 360 degrees. That makes you complete. So if you lack one of them, you're not complete. You may think you are complete. Okay? 
again, to all of you out there that's living off of these sisters, the scripture says, if a man won't work, neither let him eat, Brother Ali. If a man don't work, neither let him eat. Because the government, the government doesn't usually follow the biblical uh, principles. So sometimes, those who are not willing to work could actually go to the government and the government will provide for them. You know? Going against the laws of the Most High. Sometimes the government will provide food, clothing, and shelter for these men that don't want to work. And I know, I know this is hard for many of you Hebrews. But Paul wrote again in Thessalonians and he said, in 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, I'm going to quote it again. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone will not work, then he is not to eat. Eat. So the Apostle Paul said, if you don't work, you're not supposed to eat. It is not another man's responsibility to make sure you eat. That is, that is not mandatory. That is a voluntary thing. The brother's under no obligation to make sure you eat. And it's damn sure not on the sisters to make sure that you men eat. To have these three and four wives and you're not taking care of any of them. Now watch this. All of you men that's married to three and four wives, don't you know you're supposed to have a house for each one of those wives? You're not supposed to have them in the same damn house um, like you're having a damn orgy. You know, you're in the same damn bedroom. That's off. All you have to do is look at the scriptures. When, when Jacob had wives, each of them had their own tent. Back in those days, it was called the tent. In this day and time, it's called the house. So if you're trying to be a man and you can't afford two, three, four houses, then what the heck are you doing with two, three, or four women? Because you're not following the scriptures. You're not following the scriptures. So there's always been the expectation that able-bodied men and people are supposed to work and to provide for themselves. That those who can work but won't are a burden on anyone else, Brother Ali. Now, Brother Ali may be um, all right. Sure, We're going around, um, you know, taking care of grown, overgrown horse that's capable of taking care of themselves. That's right. But I'm not with that. You know, um, some brothers, um, some sisters may be all right um, taking care of a, a grown ass man um, because she has low self esteem. That's the only kind of sister that's going to do that, first of all. She's actually been damaged. She has low self esteem, so she'll take care of this no good man that won't, don't want to get off of his behind, his backside, and get a damn job. Right. Talking about it so hard for a black man. Well, make your own damn job. Go and get you some products and sell them wholesale. You gotta do what you can do until you can do better, brothers, sisters. So those who can work but won't are a burden to everyone else. Proverbs 3 verse, I'm sorry, Salakia. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 3 says it like this. The Lord will not suffer, meaning allow, that's an old Quaker English word, suffer meaning allow, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. So if you're righteous, the Most High is not going to let you starve. But you got to have works with your faith. You can't just believe, get on your knees and pray, and think that a man's going to come and knock on your door and say, oh, here you go, brother. Here's $150 worth of grocery. Come on, keep on praying. You don't have to go out and work and do nothing. That's a mystery. That's a spook. That's not how the most high work. You believe in that mystery God. That spook God. But he casteth away the substance of the wicked. See, the wicked are those that don't want to work. The wicked are those that want to make a living or for sisters. Proverbs 10 verse 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Meaning he don't want to work. He doesn't want to use his hands to work. He deals with a slack hand, so he becomes poor. You gotta work if you want to eat. You gotta work 
If you want to eat, Proverbs verse 10, verse 4, say, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. So working hard is how you get wealthy. What you got, OG? Oh, and um, I was just looking to you at Proverbs 14 and 23. Says in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tended only to penury. Yeah, come, come. So in all labor, your work always leads to something. It's profitable. But a man that doesn't work, it's not profitable. So in all work, there is profit. You work with your hands, it's profitable. So you know, Israelites that actually give things through generosity. Or, you know, they're given is characterized by generosity. Praise be to the Most High. But they're under no obligation to feed those that don't want to work. And brothers, sisters are under no obligation to take care of a grown man that does not want to work. That's right. You marry this sister That's and you right. mess her life up. Then you go over there and you get another one pregnant. Right. Then you feel like you have ties to them. Now I talked to now over the years, brother Ali, I've That's talked right. to sisters that say I don't know what to do about this brother. Right. You know he um he teaches real well in the street. That's right. But he won't work in a pie shop. Right. He won't work in a pie shop. Right. But he thinks it's okay. So then when things get hot with her, he go over there. He get another um, sister pregnant, but the brother doesn't have any joy. Right. So I say, how is this brother making all these babies? But he doesn't have a job. So he's to, who's taking care of his children? That's right. Who's taking care of his seeds? That's right. But out front, the brother gets a lot of likes on YouTube. His videos get a lot of hits. Now, one thing that I learned, man, if you really want to know the truth about a man, don't ask him. Ask his wife. Go and ask that man's wife because those that's closest to you Learn you can tell other people things that they don't see privately. That's right. You know what I mean? That's so, right. so, so you, you go and sit down That's right. and you talk to his wife. She'll tell you how no good this Negro is. That he's trying to paint a picture out front. And there's a lot of brothers in the nation of Israel like that. And you brothers need to stop it and stop it now. And this might be painful. Right. That's right. Brother, this is. Let me finish. Read that scripture from Isaiah. I just want to make a quick comment, all right, all right. if I may. You know, our brother is so correct. But there's a scripture in Isaiah that says that, and brother, turn to the scripture. It says, Isaiah, Salah, peace be upon him, said, listen to these words of Isaiah. He said that your righteousness is like filthy rags. Is that right, brother? He said that your righteousness is like filthy rags. Is that right, beloved? Okay, stay with me. Now, what does that mean spiritual? Not carnal, but spiritual. What the brother was just saying. We know most women love flowers. They love flowers. So, and brothers who know this, like he said earlier, they'll go get a sister a dozen roses. Mine, and in the sisters, she's so happy and thankful, and she's thanking Allah in the most high. This is a loving man and a good man. And so Isaiah said in chapter 64, verse 6, but we are all as unclean, Thing, as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags now listen to this thing. this is spiritual so he'll buy her the 12 roses she think it's a righteous act right. but he has a motive That's right. a deceptive motive to only get something out of her that is carnal mm -hmm. and most likely either it's something intimate so or to live with her. Mm -hmm. right. Or to live off her. Yeah. Now, watch both. this. Both. Or both, that's right. So, when 
the, when Allah revealed this truth to me from this I, this ayah in Torah from the prophet Isaiah, peace be upon him, I said, well, this is a problem. Because they will use that verse. You hear the Christians, they say, well, your righteousness is like filthy rags. No. If his intention is righteous, then his righteousness is not like filthy rags. It is those whose intention is deceptive to our sisters or whoever they're trying to deceive. But I'm using the sister right now because the, the topic is the man's role, from what I'm hearing, right. toward his wife, That's toward right. the woman. Is, is that right? Is okay, right. now watch this. I'm going to finish with this real quick point. I do not respect a man who do not take care of his children. In my book, he's not a man. In my book. In the Bible, he's not a man. It says he's worse than an infidel. That's right. A non believer. That's right. Now, you got children, but you won't take care of them. Mm -hmm. Has he forgotten that when he came out of his mother's womb, that somebody was right there to take care of him? So it's natural that he owe it to his see. wife and seeds to take care of them. But this slips these so-called, some of these so-called righteous Muslims and so-called righteous Hebrews and so-called righteous Kemetics and so-called righteous Moors and so-called righteous Five Percenters and all the rest of these brothers who got in this enlightened school of thought. Right, right, Let me right. call it that today. So this thing makes my blood boil. And honestly, any man that doesn't take care of his wife and children, or if he don't have a wife, he just got children. He need to be punished. That's right. For not taking care of his seeds. Mm -hmm. Now, don't take this personal to my Hebrew brothers and my Muslim brothers, but you all know we're all men. And we know what the most what Allah has put in us to do by nature and that is to work first and then you go get a family it ain't family first and then work afterwards work first then family so let's keep one thing in mind for all these brothers who use their righteousness in a filthy man that's why Isaiah said what he said you are deceiving our women using righteous acts, but you know that the behavior is filthy. Let me say it again. Your righteous act appears to her to be righteous, but you know you have a hidden motive, a hidden agenda, and that behavior is filthy. So, no, be careful when you read that scripture, our Hebrew brothers, because it just doesn't mean what you think. It is a spiritual meaning behind that. So, brother, Tazad, thank you so much as always. And finish, brother, I'm dropping them jewels, inshallah. Thank you, brother. So, you know, what I wanted to um, continue on with, man, is that one of the things that a lot of the men like to do is put in a way, is going for a divorce um, because they may have actually married a sister and the sister may not like to clean she may not like to cook and so on and so forth but you should have actually checked that out before you laid down with them because the scripture said that the most high hates divorce you can't just put a woman away for any court for any cause the Most High said he hates divorce, which means put him away in the scriptures. Book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 16. For the Lord thy power of Israel saith, he hateth putting away. Meaning he hates divorce. So I'm going to have to ask the sisters, why is 75% of divorces in the United States filed by the woman. Why are you filing for so many divorces? You're supposed to check the man out before you 
marry him. Mm -hmm. If you go and buy a used car, it usually says on it, as is. No warranty. Once you get that car, sometimes you might be protected by a lemon law. For the most part, you're not. Once you get that car, you agree to accept it as is. You can't take it back and exchange it because you have a contract. It's the same thing with the marriage. The Most High says he hates putting away. So brothers, you're supposed to check the woman out before you marry her. You might have married a woman that liked to be in strip clubs um, all the time. You saw her, oh yeah, I could change her. I hit her with some scriptures. Man, don't you know you can't change nobody unless they want to change? And you wonder why you saw her on YouTube with a damn Hershey syrup bottle, still stripping. You, you might find that she's an internet stripper. They are heartbroken, thinking you could change it. Same thing with you, sister. You know the brother was a pet, like to ride around, chase this woman, that woman. You're supposed to have checked them out before you lay with him. Because the scripture says once you marry him, sister, you cannot take another husband until he is dead. That's, the, that, that's what the scripture says. Now, most of you are not going to do that. But then the Most High is going to bring judgment against you because you're supposed to check it out before you sign the contract, before you open your quiver. So the role, the role of the husband in the Bible is to be a leader. Now, sisters may not like this, and feminists don't sure not going to like this, but it's the truth. And the reason that this world is so out of order is because the sisters want to lead. Because Esau has taught you that you could be equivalent to the man or above the man. You have most of the jobs. There's more so-called black women, Hispanic women, going to college than their men. So you've been elevated in Esau's world above the man. So Hamashiach said in the book of John 14, verse 30, the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in him. Who's the prince of this world? Satan. So this world is controlled by Satan. So if you follow the ways of the world, you're under Satan's authority. U-S-A, under Satan's authority. So America is under Satan's authority. And if you're following the ways of America, then it suffice to say that you are under Satan's authority, even though you think that you're following the Most High. So the role of the man is to be a leader. The role of the husband in the Bible is to be a leader. It starts with leaderships. The scriptures make that very clear that a husband must be a leader in his home to have a healthy life and to have healthy control over the family. First Timothy chapter 3 is speaking of the leader of the church positions. You know, that's actually traditionally, when you look at tradition, the churches was pretty much filled by men. When you look at our ancient history, men are permitted to congregate. It's mandatory. It's not necessarily mandatory for the sisters to attend one of the holy convocations, but it is mandatory for the men to attend those. So when we look at Ephesians 5, 21 through 24, to all of you sisters that don't want to be in compliance with this, it says, submit one out of reverence for Yahweh Shah. Why? Submit to your husbands. It says submission. Submit to your husbands. That's heavy. Because many women say, I'm not going to submit to anyone. You can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do. I'm grown. And you know what? They were saying the same thing during the times of Jeremiah. You can't tell us what to do. We'll do what come out of our own mouth. Jeremiah 16. Um, I mean, uh, it's lofty. I can't remember that scripture. 
but they say you can't tell us what to do. We will do what come out of our own mouth. The word that we're, you're prophesying unto us from the Lord, we will not hearken to it. What, what you got, Receiver? Oh, I just wanted to say that um, submission is voluntary. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But what do you mean by that? Elaborate on that a little bit. Meaning that you want you want to do it. Or you, you, you must want to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to want to do it. But unfortunately, that's not the way that most sisters look at it. They think that submission is a bad thing. They think that to submit means that you're under a dictator. And that's not what the scriptures are talking about. <clears throat> so, um, it, it is a good thing to submit because you're obeying the, the, the laws of the Most High. A woman is supposed to submit to a righteous man. She's not, what, what you got, Lashiva? Um, I was going to say that if a uh, um, sister think well, if her husband isn't working, then she's going to feel like that he's weak and she don't have to submit to him. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, if the man is doing the best that he can, then she needs to exercise patience and help him get a job. Right. Like Tobit, and help him get a job. Yeah. So she can actually be supportive and understanding. But if the guy just don't want to work at all, then that's an entire different story. What else you have? Oh, see what? Oh, that was it for now. Yeah, 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 hold on. Put the script on, so I can hear. Yeah, 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 that's what it is, the verse. Um, Jeremiah, it's Jeremiah um, 44, verse 16, that I was talking about. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will surely do what comes out of our own mouth. So, you know, all you so-called black women that don't want to listen to what the prophets of the Most High are saying, that's nothing new. They were saying that during the time of Jeremiah. But the curses of the Most High will come down unto you. Down unto you because the Most High has set up shepherds. He has set up shepherds that are supposed to flee, feed the flocks with truth. And righteousness. What you got, brother? Yeah, I wanted to, um, wanted to read from Proverbs. This is um, Proverbs chapter chapter six, verse six. It says, "Go to the ant, thou slugger; yeah. consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide." Overseer or ruler, provider her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one. Travelling, and thy want, I mean the need, as an armed man. So that's how you slip into poverty. Right, right, right. Just wanted to read that. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how you sleep, slip into poverty. So you know, another role of the husband is to be a provider. He is to provide for his family. Now, in this system, many of you sisters, you, you, you try and take that and run with it. But you got to understand, if you're working, it's, it's your responsibility to put your money in that home as well. Because the so-called white man has actually created a world that now both parents pretty much has to work to be able to, to provide for the family and to get the things to make you live comfortable in this society. But the role of the husband is to be a provider. This is what um, 
It was written in Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, but if any provide not for his own, and specifically those for his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So we must provide for our homes. We must be providers. So the relationship between husbands and wives must change among Israelites. There's a lot of bickering. You know, every time you talk to a sister, oh my no good husband. This and that. You talk to a brother, oh my no good wife. And so on and so forth. You better pray to the most high for peace and contentment in that home. So, you know, um, as Israelites, you need to repent. You need to put on the new man, the new woman, take off the old man and the old one. Now, the next thing is, a lot of brothers out there, they want to be knowledgeable. That's like the new fact. It's not so much about keeping the law, it's about who can prove who wrong. Who, who's more knowledgeable? Uh, I'm a, my, my, my teacher can speak fluent Hebrew. Uh, he, can, he, he can't teach, he can't speak fluent Hebrew. It's about who has the most knowledge. It's almost like it's a passing fact. So, you know, brothers, you got to stop that as well. We got to stop it. There has to be balance. It's about keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. That is what's actually going to get you into the kingdom. Now, what do I mean about Israelites? Um, that actually learn, many of you, um, from the internet. Many of you from people that's not really well run. Well, one of the problems with that is they, they can lack wisdom. They may know scripture, but they may lack wisdom. Case in point, there's a book called the Book of Joshua. Today, now although the original book of Joshua was an authentic book. Now, it's not the same book that's actually mentioned in the Old Testament. It is an 18th century forgery of the original book of Jasher. It is an 18th century forgery that actually alleges to be translated of the Lord's book of Jasher by Alakon, an 18th century English scholar. The man was a liar. It is a forgery. Now, there's also a more recent version of the book of Jasher that was actually science fiction. It's a science fiction book. It was written for fantasy and the writer was Benjamin Rosenbaum. And this book is a complete work of fiction. Now, another book by that same name, a call by many scholars, Sudio Jasher. Now, while it's actually written in Hebrew to throw you off, it is also not the book of Jasher mentioned in the scriptures. It is a book of Jewish legends from the creation to the conquest of Canaan under Joshua. But scholars hold that it did not exist before 1625 AD. So in addition to that, there are several other theological works by Jewish rabbis, or so-called Jewish rabbis and scholars, um, like the Sefer, um, Hot Yashar. But these claim to be of the original book Joshua. These are all Jewish folklore and lies and forgery. So in the end, brothers and sisters, we must conclude that the book of Joshua mentioned in the Bible was lost and it did not survive in our modern times. That's just the truth. All we really know is that it is actually found in two scriptures in the Bible. 
there's two scriptures in the Bible where that is mentioned. The other books, you know, um, are pretty much just fictitious by these so-called Jewish rabbis, or so-called Jewish scholars. You know, um, you know, they also refer to it as the book of the upright one. In the Greek Septuagint, and the book of the just ones. In Latin, the Vulcan. So the book of Joshua was probably a collection of the compilations of actually the ancient Hebrew songs and poems praising the heroes of Israel when they went to battle. When they went to battle. It's also mentioned in the book of Samuel, in 2 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 18 through 22. And it's also mentioned in the book of Joshua, the 10th chapter, verse 12 to 13. these different books um, another one that you um, brothers like to go into is um, uh, is that working now? <clears throat> it's a book of Jubilees that's another book that a lot of you Hebrews like to develop into like it's an authentic book of Jubilees and what they did is this create a so-called continuation of the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible where it talks about their daughters in the book of Jubilees. And it was probably written around the second century BC. But my point is that you have to stay away from all of these books because they're not authentic. So if you're reading from the book of Jasher, it's not authentic. You're reading from the book of Jubilees, it's not authentic. You're reading from um, the Dead Sea Scrolls is not authentic. You're reading from the book of Enoch, that's a bunch of lies. That was simply created from one verse in the scriptures. So with that, you know, I'm going to bring this to a close. Um, like this video, share this video <coughs> um, with those that may need it. And brothers, you must work. If a man does not work, he will not eat. So say of the scriptures. Once again, my name is Kahan Tazadak. I'm going to say Shalom Yasha Allah. Kahan Yasha Allah. Shalom.